the way that Cabrillo Engineering and Design program has treated some of the students, even from what I've seen, has been phenomenal. And everybody is included, no matter the background, the ethnicity. It's really great to see. Hi, I'm Ken Fisher from Cabrillo High School. I'm the lead teacher of Cabrillo Engineering and Design, and I'm here with a couple of my students. Uh, Jasmine. Marcel. And uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what Cabrillo Engineering and Design has to offer for the students of Long Beach Unified School District. Um, first of all, Jasmine, what was the main reason that you chose to come to Cabrillo High School? Uh, well, I was a, I went to middle school at Hudson, and so we were pretty close to Cabrillo. I got a couple tours, and I just I really loved the campus, the open floor plan. Perfect. Marcel? Uh, actually, when I was first joining Cabrillo, I initially was going to transfer uh, to Poly, but Cabrillo was my home school, so I had to go to Cabrillo first. And then when I was at Cabrillo, I met teachers like Mr. Fisher and the staff and even all the opportunities I saw it, so I just decided to stay with the program and the school. Perfect, perfect. Jasmine, what made you choose Cabrillo Engineering? Uh, well, on that same tour, I actually got a tour from you. Mr. Okay. Mr. Fisher, yeah, we got a tour of the labs, uh, got some stickers, and I just seen what the students were doing, and I wanted to do it. Perfect. And Marcel? Uh, did you have a choice when you came to Cabrillo, or did they just immediately put you into the engineering pathway? No, I had a choice. Okay. Um, Cabrillo, the engineering program, fit more into my interests, like okay. being able to work with my hands and learning stuff, like how stuff works and being able to build and create stuff. That was what made me choose the Cabrillo the engineering Perfect. program. And now that you've been at Cabrillo for the past couple of years, what have been some of the activities and different um, teams that you've been a part of? Uh, I was a part of FIRST Robotics. That's where you build a robot and then you go to competition. Uh, that's really fun. You get to work with the team. You get to design the robot, build the robot, program the robot. And it's, it not only teaches you how to do all of those things, it teaches you how to work with other people. Perfect. And did you join any other teams while you've been at Cabrillo? Uh, unfortunately not. I've only been here for two years. Uh, okay. I'm on a sports team. but What sport do you play? I play water polo and Perfect. I swim. Perfect. Perfect. And Jasmine, how about you? Uh, in the beginning of the year, I did Cyber Patriots, which was really cool. Cybersecurity, I learned a lot that I didn't know before. I had no idea what I was even doing. But being in Cyber Patriots gave me a foundation, and it was just really fun. I've also done volleyball and basketball at Cabrillo. Those were really good opportunities. I learned a lot about teamwork. Perfect. Perfect. All the clubs. And if there's one thing, like one experience, Jasmine, that you've um, – that you've had at Cabrillo that's kind of like just changed your whole mindset about engineering, about you, about your future in college. Um, what's that one experience? Definitely planning the Women in STEM event that we held recently. That was something that I never thought I would be able to do, especially because I had never been to a Women in STEM event in person. So planning it and being able to meet professionals, make the programs, um, just come up with everything that needed to be done was it was really a really great opportunity. Now, you actually didn't just uh, help to organize it. I mean, you helped to develop the theme. Um, and what? how did you develop the theme in terms of uh, uh, women in STEM event at Cabrillo High School? Well, every year they have the Women's International Day. Uh, mm -hmm. Women's, yeah, International, International, International Women's, International Day, Women's yeah. Day. Yeah, and then uh, the theme for International Women's Day this year was Embrace Equity. Mm -hmm. So we go off of that and... We wanted to kind of integrate it with STEM, so we our, our theme was embrace STEM, embrace equity. So perfect. That was perfect. something that we brainstormed as a team. And and when you're talking about the the companies um, in which helped to put that event on, what were some of those companies? Uh, one some of the big companies were Marathon, Valero, Amplify, Custom Inc., which actually donated all of our shirts, which and uh, helped design. Our logo, actually, that was a really great uh, opportunity to work with all these companies and just kind of start networking, you know? That was perfect, great. perfect. And Marcel, what is the one big event that you think that you've been a part of that kind of just changed your mindset about high school um, that Cabrillo has offered you um, in terms of like your future and, and what you might potentially go into in college? Well, I think it was less about certain events, but more about the way the students and the teachers interact with one each other. It's like a, a big family, and we 
it, it's really like that. It's like a second home. And it's fun to be able to come to school and have that same environment as home and to learn at the same time. That's that's the main thing that like made me really enjoy Cabrillo. Yeah, I would like to add on to that. Being at Cabrillo has like, the environment has been so welcoming. Whenever you step into something new, you're always so scared at first. You're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. But like the students and the teachers at Cabrillo, they never make you feel like you can't do it. They're always inspiring you and uplifting you and like, yeah, you know, and guiding you. It's really great. Excellent. Excellent. Now, you said that you were part of the women in STEM. Were there a group of kids that helped with that or was it just you? Um, what, is the organ what is the system that you guys use to develop that? There is a group. We have our CED and then our GEMS group, uh, the Girls Engineering Math and Science group, and then our Cabrillo Engineering and Design. And it, we kind of worked together to, um, you know, get everything done. It was me and my friends, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, this is my team. These are my friends that I see every day that I hang out with during lunch. So it was just really cool to plan an event with them, you know. How many people attended the event, do you know? It was like over 100, maybe like 150. There was, there was a lot of people. Perfect. All right. So then um, as you're looking toward after high school now, with what Cabrillo has given you in, what are you looking to do now? I'll start with you, Marcel, after high school. Well, originally, I was planning on becoming a surgeon, going into something in the medical field. And when I came to Cabrillo and was offered all of these different classes, like our aerospace class and our class with Mr. Marsh, our EDD, where we're able to make pens and, and just create stuff, learn stuff with software like Mastercam. Now I'm leaning more towards the engineering field, specifically the aerospace field. Perfect. And you mentioned a couple software packages there. What other packages, what other software CAD systems have you learned um, while, while you've been at Cabrillo Engineering and Design? We've used a Mastercam this year. Well, I've used Mastercam this year. Uh, we've also gotten to RoboCell, cell setup, learning how to program a robot and to get it to do its objective. Um, we've also used SpatialVis to help with our awareness in terms of thinking abstractly. Um, we've Play chess to help <laughs> think <laughs> strategically. Chess. And I'm pretty sure there's one more, but I'm forgetting. Have you guys learned SolidWorks in Mr. Marsh's class too? Um, I don't know. Or in yet. Mr. and Miss Marquez's maybe? Um, no, not yet. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, we, I think we've done SolidWorks. That's, I remember that being the program that I got more well versed with because Mastercam was kind of hard, but SolidWorks, uh, we got a pretty good foundation on that. I think Fusion 362. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or Autodesk Inventor on shape. Mm -hmm. um, Rhinos. Rhino. 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 Yeah. yeah. Rhino. Thank you. I don't know all of them either that all the, some of the other teachers use. So it's, it's kind of nice for me to rethink about it. Mm -hmm. um, and using, uh, you, you talked about like the aerospace class, um, Jasmine, um, what kind of field trips have you been on that have like just that Cabrillo has offered you that just allowed you to think about engineering in a different context? Definitely has to be uh, our glider flight field trip that I got to go to as a junior. It's normally offered to seniors, but I got to go last year and it was just, it was so fun. I got to fly a glider, calculate the data, the altitude, the speed. And it was just, it was, we got to visit the Edwards Air Force Base um, in Antelope Valley, I believe. And it was just a really awesome experience. That field trip alone, seeing all the aircraft and working with pilots and stuff. It was just, it made me want to be like a, a pilot, it made me want to join the Air Force. But then after, you know, taking an aerospace class that I took this year, I realized that maybe I don't want to go into aviation, but that that's what, you know, and at Cabrillo, you get a foundation and you see if you like it and if you don't. And that's really, that's really great, I think. Perfect. And for Marcel, your knowledge, I think you're in aerospace engineering this mm -hmm. year, correct? So part of this project is actually you guys learning about, you know, the role pitch in yaw of a plane. You're going to learn the wing design system. Uh, you're going to, first of all, practice on our just normal computer flight simulators. But then you get to sit in that really big flight simulator in the back of the room. That's just tremendous to fly. Um, and then we show you how to use, how to actually collect mathematical data with MATLAB. Uh, then you drop that data down into Excel and you model it. You learn mathematical modeling, working along with uh, four aerospace engineers, actually from Edwards Air Force Base, uh, three pilots, of course, that are going up in the gliders with you guys. Um, and then you're actually going to present to them. So it's an opportunity for you guys to actually already integrate into aerospace engineering in a different context um, than just building like a rocket or, or flying a drone. You actually get the bigger picture of it all. So it's kind of phenomenal uh, when you think about a project to that extent. 
Um, is there has there been has there been any other interactions, Marcel, that you've had uh, in terms of professionals and and mentoring from professionals at Cabrillo Engineering and Design? Mm -hmm. um, recently, this year uh, and last year, we were able to go to uh, UC Irvine for our national. Engineering Ash National Academy of Engineering National Academy of Engineering, where you get to meet with all different kinds of professionals. You get to see how engineers present in a work environment, but they also answer your questions. So you can see the level of readiness that your presentation needs to be at, as well as some of the new cutting edge engineering information. It's really fun. And you also get to make some of those connections that'll help you get into schools or just are good to know for when you actually get into the industry. Perfect. And did you go on that trip too, Jasmine? I did, yes. And was that preluded by a field trip before we went to the National Academy? Did you go to the the trip to, that started to to Edwards Life Sciences? Oh yes, we went to Edwards Life Sciences. Uh, it's a heart, a heart valve manufacturing company, and mm -hmm. it was just a really awesome experience. We got to do hands on. We got to touch the materials that the heart valve, the heart valves are made out of. We got to uh, talk to the workers there. We got to see the labs. It was really fun, especially for a student who was thinking about going into biomedical engineering. Um, it's just, you know, to be, to want something and then to be able to visit the a site where that's happening is just so great, you know, because you could, you could always want like, oh my God, I want to be. Uh, a pilot, but then you've never been in this in the sky. You don't yeah. know. So when you are actually putting that into play, you get to experience it in a different level. You know. And did they train you guys? I think you went on that trip also, correct? Mm -hmm. In a uh, to to the Edwards Life Sciences. Yeah. Yeah. So on that trip, what else did you guys learn to do while you were there? How did you get trained in something hands on? Uh, Marcel, we were able to insert a heart valve or into a model heart they had on the table after our presentation, explaining like what the heart valves do, what, how they're made and what they can do for people. And that was actually for those, I, I mean, I know Brian Murphy actually explained that when he, we were down there, but that is you guys went through the same identical training as what heart surgeons go through. And so you guys had, a, it, was, it wasn't like the six hour training that they no. did them, but it, it was an hour long training that you guys actually had to be able to insert these heart valves um, into a model. That's what they start off with. So you've got to fly in a glider, learn about you know, aerospace engineering in terms of flight test engineering. You got to learn even potentially talking about a heart surgeon uh, and how uh, a biomedical engineer designs and creates some of this stuff and then how they also train uh, the doctors to be able to put that in. That's a lot of incredible stuff that Cabrillo has given you just in the past year. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know that you guys, your first two years were devastated by COVID. Um, that's understanding that, you know, your, your freshman, sophomore year, half of your freshman and all of your sophomore year. So you've actually missed out on a lot of other things, um, such as in our principles of engineering class, uh, where we typically have the students um, do their compound machine designs. And from there, we actually invite in our advisory board members that work at various companies. Uh, this year it was Clark Construction and then um, Southland Industries where the kids actually had to present to these professionals and get feedback on their mechanical designs and, and their presentation skills, how they were dressed, how they looked um, at the professionals. So that's the one big thing that I, as the lead teacher of Cabrillo Engineering and Design, always like to put forth is how much we connect kids to the professionals in the industry. I'm a math teacher by trade, right? I, or, I'm a mathematician by trade, and that eventually fell into becoming a math instructor that now is going over to the career tech ed industry, I guess you can say, because of the cool stuff that we've actually designed with Mr. Marsh and Ms. Marquez. Um, just, the, just the phenomenal uh, amount of opportunities that you have at Cabrillo High School. Um, but as you guys now think about your future and how do you think, um, has there been anything in which we can interact better with like middle school kids to get middle school kids to know about what opportunities are actually at Cabrillo. Definitely. I remember uh, not so long ago, we had a side day where we went to Stevens and we brought some of the things that we were working on. Um, some things that we cut out on our laser cutter, our VEX robots. And I know the kids, they had a blast, but it would be really cool if we could bring them into Cabrillo. Yeah. And if they were kind of able to shadow a student all day to see uh, what we can do, maybe, making pens or our electric cars, 
using our laser cutters, uh, making cargo gliders like in our Mesa class or aerospace. It would be really fun to get middle schoolers out there into Cabrillo and see what we're doing. Okay, Easy. perfect. And what other competition teams do we have at Cabrillo Engineering and Design? I know it's mostly all for Cabrillo, but what are the competition teams that typically the engineering students get involved with at um, Cabrillo? Right now, a big one is drone soccer. A drone soccer. Drone soccer. Uh, it's so cool. I'm not personally involved, but I see them flying the drones all the time, and it's so cool. Uh, they recently went to Palm Springs. Palm Springs, Palm Springs yes. Springs, yeah, and they had a competition. And in April, they're going to go to New York, and yeah. they're going to be competing. And I just – I wish that I got involved with that. I was a little <laughs> preoccupied with the Women in STEM event, but yeah. it just – it looks so cool. Well, there's – and there's multiple opportunities, and that's what I want people to really know is that, you know, from the first robotics team, Marcel, mm -hmm. that you mentioned to the drone soccer team, to our Mesa competition team, which of course everybody in Long Beach Unified uh, pretty much has, uh, but what kind of makes us somewhat unique are like our two new electric cars that we're going to be entering into a new competition with next year, uh, the Team American Rocket Challenge, right? Building a rocket, being able to do that. Um, and then of course we have our, our engineering design teams that actually get involved. Uh, we have our Cyber Patriot team. I think you were part yeah. of that, right? You were talking about that. So all just the multitude of competition teams that are relative to engineering, computer programming, computer uh, security, all these different aspects of what Cabrillo Engineering and Design actually offers all the students of Cabrillo High School. Um, in terms of, like, let's go a little bit back to that Women in STEM event. Um, and, and let's talk about like what the boys did. How did you feel about how the boys interacted, Jasmine, in that event? The boys were very professional. You know, I get to see them every day as students, but they were all suited up and dressed up and they were uh, serving us actually for our lunch. And they also got to kind of interact with professionals. Um, and it was just it was a really great it was a really great thing to see the, our boys acting so mature. And so, you know, uh, like they were very sleek and it was it was kind of a wild sight to see. Nice, nice. And Marcel, did you participate in that? I did. And how did you feel about being a part of the Women in STEM event? I enjoyed it, actually. I enjoyed the part of being able to, like, give way or maybe not give way, uh, inspire others or help others join engineering programs. Okay. Because the way that Cabrillo Engineering and Design Program has treated some of the students, even from what I've seen, has been phenomenal. And everybody's included, no matter the background, the ethnicity. It's really great to see. Perfect. Now, there's one field trip that I know both of you are probably going on um, that's coming up. There's actually a couple more. Of course, we have the glider flights coming up again, right? But there's one other trip that Mr. Marsh likes to put on where he, what does he do with that? And who wants to talk about that? Um, well, we're going to go to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Okay. And I'm really excited for that one. I went last year. Uh, before we go, though, to the Cal Poly campus, we visit Haas Industry, um, the Haas Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And we get to see a bunch of CNC machines, robotic arms being uh, put to use. So we get a tour of this manufacturing company. It's really cool. I don't think like any other schools get to go. Uh, it's just it's it's a really unique opportunity as far as the Haas manufacturing and also even going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And we get a foundation on foundry, which is like um, melting metal and pouring it into molds that we make on designs. Actually, we get to design our medallions that we're going to walk down the graduation carpet mm -hmm. yeah and it's really cool i'm excited to wear that and know that i i put i was the one who made it so you're going to design it on mastercam correct mm -hmm. and then you guys are going to actually see and see out the, the wax yes and then from there you have to actually go through the whole processing of molding it pouring it or going through that and then you're going to end up actually cutting sanding doing a bunch of different things to make sure your medals are good for not just you, but all of the 120 seniors that Cabrillo is going to be graduating out of our engineering and design pathway. So it is a phenomenal trip, overnight trip. You guys get to stay in a hotel um, because of the, you know, the different tours that we take you on Haas Manufacturing. Uh, and so it actually, um, I know you said you went on it last year, Marcel. Did you get to go last year? Unfortunately not. Yeah. So, and uh, what this is, I mean, the, the, the camaraderie that Mr. Marsh actually develops on part of this trip it is absolutely phenomenal for the seniors. And he does always invite a handful of juniors. Um, so that way he has his trainers for next year. So the juniors, like Jasmine, you're going to now train the seniors on exactly what to do because you've gone through the process. 
This is a system that me and Mr. Marsh and Ms. Marquez have actually put into play in, in almost everything we do is that we want to train the undergrad to actually train everybody else. As you become seniors, you're going to pass that down. That comes from, you know, years of teaching at Cabrillo High School and, and me being there for 25 years, Mr. Marsh being one of the original um, OGs, I guess you could say, right? He's yeah, been there he's... since day one uh, that Cabrillo opened 20, 27 years ago. So He likes to brag that he has the blueprints to Cabrillo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really phenomenal to kind of think about some of those things. In terms of Cabrillo, like we've talked about everything that we do inside of our pathway, the competition teams that we do. And I know COVID kind of restricted us in some ways, but what are some of the things that uh, Cabrillo Engineering and Design has done? I know we didn't do it this year because multiple things um, that we do already, we're integrating back in for next year that the GEMS and the CED leadership team are getting back together. One of the things I want to talk about is like our hackatory. Um, I don't know if either of you did that last year. I know this year it was kind of cut off, um, but that hack a toy event um, where we actually, you know, take, take toys uh, that have been donated in from various companies and people from Cabrillo. Um, and we teach the kids, you know, basically how to modify them uh, for, for, some of the kids that maybe don't have the, the motor skills to be able to actually sit there and, um, you know, play with it in the system that it is. So we like to integrate in teaching you all the electronics, how to rewire it, how to 3D print our own big push buttons. So it's been it's a phenomenal opportunity to do that. And then the other one that I like to talk about is our winter festival. And I know we skipped it this year. I had my issues at the beginning of the first semester, couldn't get it up and running. Um, and that's why it's important to train and train, right? That we get other people in there. Um, but that winter festival where we actually collaborate with the local elementary schools and middle schools, we do a ton, a big toy drive, and then we take them through our STEM fair, right? We yeah. teach them how to use, you know, solid works to be able to actually um, design their own gingerbread house. They go to the manufacturing lab where they actually manufacture their, from their blueprint, we print out that blueprint, um, then we take them up to the chemistry labs where they actually, you know, use chemicals to make their own ornament. Uh, we teach them mathematics, right? Doing math art in terms of winter, a winter kind of theme. And then, of course, ending with the luncheon and the, uh, the giving out of the toys, which, of course, all the kids uh, on the west side of Long Beach actually truly just adore. Um, and so I know we did not get to do it this year and I do apologize for that, but we're already planning it for next year. Yes. We already got it on the books. So we got that going. Um, and of course you're, you know, the, the students that you guys have been training, will take that on and really do some amazing things with it. Um, are there any questions that you guys have for me? Um, actually, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just, I don't know. I know that this year has been kind of hard to do all of these various events because it kind of feels like we're starting new again yeah. uh, after COVID. So I just want to know like how you're going to um, kind of reinvent these events in a different way, yeah. you know, in the, in the future. Well, very similar to, you know, what we took you and the rest of the gems through to get prepared for the women in STEM, right? Helping you to see the path um, that it needs to take, creating a new checklist for the new way that we want to run uh, the women in STEM event, even though I'm kind of the face of it in terms of, you know, being the MC. Um, but of course you found out this year, Jasmine, as you did an incredible job, not just organizing and planning it, um, but running it on the day of the event, you know, hosting the women in STEM panel, um, where the questions were all organized and everything. So basically by training you and then already getting the next girls coming up to be in the leadership positions, you training them before you leave. And so I know we haven't talked about that too much, but that's what May and June are going to be about, right? You getting, you know, as we nominate our next group of, of students to run uh, the Cabrillo Engineering and Design um, Club, and then the kids who are going to be, you know, leading the GEMS Club, this is going to be how you guys leave your legacy here at Cabrillo High School. As seniors, you're going to help to train the next group of kids coming up. And that's the process that we had prior to COVID, you know, what we called our ambassador program. Um, and so that ambassador program started like back in 2008, it was to literally train students to go through and train the next group and, and to let the community know what is happening at Cabrillo High School. And of course, COVID shut it all down, but we, I'm looking forward to bringing that path back is really what I want to do. Um, and just really giving the kids the insights about all the competition teams, all the club opportunities, and really 
the unique field trips that nobody else does in our district. I mean, it is really from the, the, the mentoring that we have from professionals. Um, and it's not just like one or two. You're talking about, you know, the women in STEM had 40 professional engineers being a part of that. You know, our connections with some of these big aerospace companies in the Long Beach area that have just given our kids great insight um, to what it means to truly be an engineer. The glider flight project, right, where you get to interact going to Edwards Life Sciences, where you get to train as like a, a heart surgeon, you know, all these different unique systems, unique field trips that really give you great insight. And we're not done, we're gonna develop more. We're developing more with all of these different companies that have, have been in contact with us. Um, kind of the cool part about being a long-term um, pathway lead at Cabrillo is the fact that as I interact with one company, just more just decide to keep coming on. And so from projects with Southland Industries to Marathon Petroleum to Valero Petroleum, all these big projects that, you know, even trying to bring back our roller coaster project that we did years ago prior, you know, and connecting to some of these mechanical engineering companies again. Um, it's just literally about just making sure that the people out there, the students that are seventh and eighth graders, sixth, seventh and eighth graders coming in, that they really know the unique opportunities that Cabrillo Engineering and Design have to offer. Um, it's really phenomenal. Any other questions you guys might have? Uh, yes, you were mentioning some of the field trips and some of the programs and competition teams that we have, but what other resources does CED offer to ensure the students have a better future? Real, oh, great question. Really just in terms of our peer tutoring that we offer at Cabrillo High School that students, you guys, um, can actually apply to be a peer tutor and actually help students underneath you. I also believe that being a peer tutor helps you, especially in terms of mathematics, um, but really just the passion and the commitment of the teachers of Cabrillo High School, not just in Cabrillo Engineering and Design, but all the pathways, how they stay after school to support. They give the free tutoring. They're making sure um, that they're checking up on the kids. If kids are absent for multiple days, the way that the teachers interact, the way that our administration has put in actual systems to help each kid um, that, that might not be having the greatest time yet um, and what we can do to support them. I'm um, talking to them about the multiple ways that uh, they can interact at Cabrillo and, and get involved. Like I said, not just engineering, but with every aspect of every pathway um, to just help every student find out who they are and what they want. That's really what we go after um, as the, the, the teachers of Cabrillo and the passion that we bring forth to whether it's getting involved with the mock trial of CalJ or getting involved with the animation club of SACMA or, or the tremendous things that the Academy of Global Logistics actually gets to have connected to the Port of Long Beach and all the field trips. The greatest thing about all of us is that we all work together to make sure that the students are feeling supported, that they know that there's somebody there that does care, just like you guys said earlier in this podcast, right? That you felt like you were part of a family and that's what we go after as teachers. But from the peer tutoring, to teachers staying in their classrooms after school um, and supporting, keeping their, their rooms available during lunch. Um, and, and just some of the unique link learning projects um, that we do, you know, from Miss, from the history teacher, Ms. Ben Hayims, right? Her, her engineering models that you guys created that you worked on in your CTE class, in your history class, in your English class. The way that's how we like to support kids is by giving them instead of giving them English teacher, giving them a project, the history teacher, giving them a project, the math teacher, giving them a project. We're going to give one and show how it relates to each of the different classes. And so therefore, one project is what you work on, but you get credit for it in all the classes because each, you know, when you do any kind of engineering of course, math is going to be involved. Science is going to be involved. There's writing, right? You have to give your presentation. So English language arts is involved. And then, of course, typically it's connected to some historical concept, whether it's our 9-11 project or I think for the engineering model, you guys had to connect it to a specific president. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. So you're talking about linking all of this together through this link learning coalition of the state of California that uh, Long Beach is really going forth with, which is powerful. So... We support in a multitude of ways, um, but the coolest part about Cabrillo and Cabrillo Engineering Design is how we look at just each student as an individual and figure out how we can best support that one student instead of trying to do it collectively, but just, hey, what can we do to help and support you and talking with the parents and talking to the students to see what the best method is. Yeah, and we definitely feel that as students, we, yeah. feel, we feel the support. Perfect, perfect.
What would you guys want more? Is there anything that you can think of that you might want more from our pathway? Honestly, no. I've I've can I can say that I've been happy, more than happy with how the pathway interacts, how the opportunities come, the opportunities we get to go on or experience. I can say that I'm happy with how I've been treated and learned at Cabrillo. Perfect. Jasmine? Um, I can say the same. Although there's always definitely room for improvement, especially in CED, we like to innovate, especially with our events. So like with the Women in STEM event, uh, we like what we're doing, but we also want to we also want to keep growing. You know, we, don't, we never want to be stagnant. And I think that's what I like the most about CED is after you accomplish something, it's like, oh, my God, great job. But what next? Yeah. You know, like, what are you going to do? And I, I think that's something that CED is really good at. And um, I mean, I can't really name something off the top of my head to critique, but I know that we will definitely innovate what our pathway is doing. Perfect. Our original pathway motto was think, create and build. Right. And that's kind of what we continue to do um, in terms of Cabrillo Engineering and Design. So, guys, I thank both of you for joining me here today. And uh, I look forward to watching you, walking you, uh, watching you walk across that stage of graduation. And I couldn't be more proud uh, to be your teacher at Cabrillo Engineering and Design. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.